Well, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And wow, <laughs> just totally blown away by the packed house that we have today. So thank you to everybody that's here live with us today for this Pinterest training. We're talking about how to use Pinterest for business, your guide to rapid growth. And before we get started, just a, a couple of housekeeping notes, just some quick reminders. This is going to be a really fast paced webinar. We want to make sure that you get the most out of it. So clear your desk, turn off those pesky notifications and get those typing fingers or pen and paper ready to go because we are going to share a lot of great information here today. We also want to make sure that you're using the hashtag. We're going to be actively tweeting this webinar. Uh, and if you'd like to join that conversation over on Twitter, make sure that you use the hashtag Pinterest hacks. Uh, that'll ensure that everybody that's here with us today and not not able to join us live um, will uh, be able to see everything that we're, we're chatting about. Uh, and then finally, to everybody that did register, that is here live, you're going to get a link uh, to this webinar as well. So uh, we appreciate you being here live, but you'll get to listen to the replay um, and, and go over and over and over all of those juicy little tidbits that Melissa is going to share with you today. Uh, so let's dive in. Let's get started. Well, first of all, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Rebecca Radis. I am the global brand ambassador for Post Planner, uh, an award-winning blogger, social media strategist, and author of How to Use Social Media to Virtually Crush the Competition. You can find me on Twitter um, if you'd like to include me in your tweets today, at Rebecca Radis, or we can connect any Anywhere online at Rebecca Radis and then also at Post Planner. And then Melissa, I have just uh, had such the honor of working with Melissa on this is our second webinar and our second Pinterest webinar, but getting to know Melissa and just the amazing work that she and her team are doing over at Tailwind. So Melissa is the marketing manager and resident cat lady. You're going to have to explain that one to us at Tailwind. I just love cats so much. <laughs> You're a meme in and of yourself, huh? <laughs> Basically, yes. I connect with those memes very deeply. Well, and I, I would assume like all of us in the marketing arena, you are juggling a lot of things. You are content creation, social media, blogging, PR, you name it. You wear that hat on any given day, correct? That's right. And uh, Rebecca, it looks like your screen is not being shared yet. Just wanted to let you know. Oh, shoot. Okay. It was sharing, so it must have stopped sharing. Let's try that again. Gotta love technology. There we go. You do. All right. Better. Thank you for letting me know. No problem. Okay. All right. So, Melissa, thank you again so much for being here with us today. Um, I, I just learn an immense amount every single time we get to be together. Um, so, I am ready if you are ready to dive in. Ready. All right. So first and foremost, what you're going to learn here today is how to use Pinterest to connect with your target market. So we're going to talk about where are those people that are looking for your content and how can you find them uh, and connect them with your product or service and then how to create content that your audience is going to love. We're going to show you um, how to identify what content you already have. So how can you repurpose that? And then how can you position it for maximum Pinterest exposure? And then on top of that, we're going to show you how to get out there and start finding other people's content as well. And then why and how are rather steps to create a reliable stream of traffic to your website and blog? Because if you're, uh, you know, whether you're a blogger or you're somebody that does have a product or service and you're, you're driving people over to your website, the idea is to create a consistency in how that stream of traffic is actually getting to your website and your blog. And then why and how 
you must leverage other social networks to boost channel awareness. And this is really a critical piece that we find a lot of people miss. You're out there, you're using Pinterest, you've started to use it to promote your business, but you haven't completely figured out how to integrate it into a total or overall marketing strategy. So we're going to show you how to do that and why you need to cross promote everything that you're doing out there, uh, not only on Pinterest, but across your social networks as well. And just real quick, um, we're going to do a Q&A at the end, but please feel free if you have questions, Melissa and I will be monitoring those. So feel free to ask those uh, within the comments section. Feel free to tweet those out and uh, we will definitely be uh, monitoring, paying attention and getting answers to you either throughout um, or at the very end. We're going to make time for Q&A. So why use Pinterest for business? This may be, you know, one of those silly questions that gets asked all the time and you've already bought into the fact that you should most definitely be on Pinterest, but there's a lot of people that still scratch their head. They still wonder, you know, what is it about this elusive social network um, that makes it just so worthwhile for businesses? And why should I be spending my time over there? Well, number one, your audience is on Pinterest. And this is one we definitely hear or get a lot of pushback on. Ah, you know, my audience isn't over there. They're not spending time. They're not actively pinning. You know, one I, I seem to hear a lot is, uh, you know, my business, what I do, it's not real sexy. So it's not getting pinned or shared a lot. And to that, I, I say, I totally disagree. And hopefully we're going to show that to you today. Your audience is definitely on Pinterest and they're actively using it. So just take a look at the stats. 55% of women aged 18 to 55 are on Pinterest. That's a huge number. The number of men on Pinterest doubled. So doubled in 2014 and I have a, a good friend, Jeff C., who uh, has the Manly Pinterest show, and I would imagine he has single-handedly helped with that, um, but it's very exciting to me to see that men are making their way over to Pinterest and realizing that they're a segment we desperately need over on Pinterest. And then a third of millennials on, are on Pinterest. And in fact, millennial moms are, are one of the top demographic over there on Pinterest. So just a, a huge amount of opportunity dependent on your industry, as I said, to find your audience and get your content right there in front of them. Why else should you be using Pinterest? Well, number two, Pinterest is so much more than just a social network. Uh, Pinterest co-founder just recently said, uh, Evan Sharp said, people have stopped talking about Pinterest as just a social network, and that's a good thing. Pinterest is not about sharing with your friends. It's about saving ideas for your future. Now, I would disagree with that just a little bit because I think it is about sharing with your friends all of those ideas that maybe you are saving for the future. Um, but it's also about sharing, connecting uh, with those potential clients, with those people that are actively looking for your content. But of course, the idea here is that Pinterest isn't just another social network. It's a dream catcher. It's a way for you to plan for the future. It is just so much more than maybe what we've become accustomed to with other social networks. And it definitely has a unique ability to help users plan for their future. So no matter what you're looking for, whether you're looking to buy that, that next computer, and I am a total Mac girl. So of course, that's the image I chose. But whether you're looking to purchase your next maybe piece of technology, or you're looking to get married, whatever it is that uh, you are uh, creating, or you are dreaming about, or you are planning for within your life, Pinterest is there to help you uh, find that information to connect with the right information, and allows you to capture that information, um, those thoughts, those ideas, those dreams, all in one location. And it's, it's really no surprise to me to see that 
so many people are using it in this exact way for the exact reasons we've talked about. You know, it's evolved over the last several years. It's evolved from what we uh, maybe called it initially, which was just a, a virtual pin board or online pin board into this living, breathing uh, dream board for so many and a way for us to, in real time, connect with that content that we're looking for. So, so again, no matter the industry, really, I, I, I encourage you today to open your mind up to the immense amount of possibility and opportunity that's out there for you on Pinterest. Number three of why you should be spending your time on Pinterest as a business is better sales. And who doesn't want <laughs> better sales? So Pinterest buyers spend more money more often and on more items than any of the other top five social media sites. Now, this is one of those stats you need to read and then digest and think about over and over and over and talk to your team about. If you're, if you're a part of a brand or a, a larger marketing team, this is something you really have to consider because obviously how you're positioning your content, how you're positioning your products is going to have a huge impact on your sales if you're using Pinterest properly, if you're actively using it within your marketing plan. So just another exciting reason why you you should be spending your time over there on Pinterest. And in fact, you know, just to take it one step further, as far as sales, uh, not only is it helping you make those decisions, but it's driving purchasing decisions in some very key categories. So dependent on uh, exactly what business you're in, some of those top categories are food, clothing, home decor, beauty, and health and fitness. So people were polled and they said, hey, in these top categories, I go to Pinterest to make decisions. I'm looking at uh, a, a recipe before I run out and actually purchase something. I am looking at, you know, options for maybe my fall wardrobe. Maybe I want that new pair of boots. Uh, maybe it's home decor. Maybe I'm thinking about buying a, a, a new, uh, I don't know, a desk, or maybe it's a couch. And I I'm going to home decor. I'm doing a search on Pinterest to see what it is not only that my friends are pinning, but what companies, what brands are pinning that maybe is something new that's up and coming. Maybe it's something, a, a specific style that I'm looking for. Maybe I just really love uh, vintage desks and I want that perfect reproduction. Um, and, and Pinterest is that, that perfect place to find that. So top categories, food, clothing, home decor, beauty, health and fitness, but that's certainly doesn't mean that if you fall outside of that, that there's not opportunity for you as well. And then number four, and of course, most importantly, after sales comes more revenue. So uh, you are seeing more revenue come out of your efforts on Pinterest than Twitter, Facebook, combined. So it's just an amazing amount of opportunity, as I said, for sales, revenue, uh, for you to get found, for your product to get found uh, over there on Pinterest. And I think that's just why we start here talking about sales and revenue. It's, I think there's still this huge disconnect. Um, Melissa, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think there's this huge disconnect for businesses in how to monetize Pinterest and how to truly make it um, affect your bottom line. I think so many people still see Pinterest as a whole lot of pretty pictures, a whole lot of women uh, over there pinning things like, you know, a, a wedding dress, like um, clothing, and don't see it as a lead, a sales, a revenue generator. And we are here to definitely dispel that, um, that there is so much more to Pinterest than just printing uh, or pinning pretty things. Uh, not to say that that's not fun to do, because I definitely believe we need to have a mix, a nice mix of what we're pinning. And we're going to talk about that. Um, but as you can see, there's just, a, it's a very robust, uh, so 
social network at this point, a very expansive network at this point that gives you multiple and various opportunities within your business. So why are people using Pinterest? Um, obviously, every social network is a little bit different. Why we use one against the other, uh, very different and very specific reasons. So for example, Twitter is uh, it, what I'm doing. So it's it's what I'm sharing, what I'm doing right now. Um, it's it, Facebook, you know, who I am. Facebook, I still think, is that big boy on the block. Uh, you still see the fact that people have created very deep and meaningful uh, relationships over there on Facebook. And over the years, that has definitely evolved into a situation where it's it's both personal and professional. So it's, it's a mix. But Pinterest is more about who I want to be. It's for the dreamer. And it, it really acts as a living, breathing motivator, uh, an inspirational tool to guide and push us towards who we want to be. So basically, people are going to Pinterest to be inspired. So something to really keep in mind as you're thinking about what is that content I'm going to create for Pinterest? How am I going to position my content? Think about the fact that that's exactly what people are coming to Pinterest for. It's all about who they want to be uh, and how they want to get inspired to become that person. All right. Thanks for that overview, Rebecca. That was very informative. And our first tip on really pushing your business on Pinterest is to connect with the right pinners and nurture those relationships. These are the people who can help propel your reach beyond anything you could get on your own. And a great place to start finding those pinners is looking for those people who are already finding your products and services on Pinterest. You still there? Did we lose you? Yeah. Oh. oh. Oops, sorry. You needed me to move the slide. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> See how I am? We got it now. We're good. Ha ha. Did I go too far or are we good? We're good. All right. That's what we needed. And so a great place to start finding those pinners uh, is actually on Pinterest itself. This is one of my absolute favorite hacks that Pinterest provides. And you just go to Pinterest.com slash source slash your domain. So in this example, we have Target.com. So we just went to Pinterest.com slash source slash Target.com. Very simple. And you can also do this for other companies in your industry or your competitors. So maybe you can go to your competitor's domain on Pinterest discover a few pinners looking for products similar to yours and go ahead and just sway them over to your side. Get yourself a few, a few fans from your competitors. And another awesome way to find influencers is actually with Pinterest built-in analytics, which you can get just by verifying your domain with Pinterest. Uh, when you're logged in, just go to your domain tab, find boards that are driving engagement back to your site. Now, not all of these pinners are going to be a great fit, but you really can find some really awesome, awesome uh, influencers. Like here, Jeff C., who Rebecca actually mentioned earlier, was one of the ones that popped up on Tailwinds. So he's influential in Pinterest, he's influential in social media, and he's been such a great friend of Tailwind. So it made perfect sense that he would show up on our analytics. And similarly, you can do the same thing with Tailwind. Uh, you just sync your domain with Tailwind, and here we have the Tailwind blog synced. And you can see uh, what pins are getting the mystery pins from your site. So this one, within the past week, got 350 repins. When I clicked through to it, it took me to a page that uh, was a woman who had, I think, 25,000 followers. I would not have been able to find her had I not looked and found this top performing pin, clicked through, and reached out. And because Pinterest is positioning themselves as more of a search and discovery engine than your traditional social media platform, 
it really gives you access to one of the most powerful targeted tools for finding influencers. Take advantage of that targeted search. Use keywords that are important to your company and find those influential pinners directly on Pinterest. When you do a search for pinners, you can see the number of pins, the number of followers, whether they're verified, a few of their boards, and all of those results are just right there. They're yours for the taking. However, with all of this talk about influencers, it's really important to note that just because someone has a million followers doesn't mean they're the right influencer for you. You've got to find the ones that are targeted for you. So an example of this, oh, <laughs> yes, a well-targeted account with 50,000 followers is going to be much more effective at driving users to your site than an account with 2 million followers that doesn't pin about your industry. And an example of this is Constant Contact with 49 million followers who pins about digital marketing, social media, um, things that Tailwind is more interested in, is going to be a better influencer than Joy Cho, who's an amazing designer, um, pins about motherhood, great recipes, and has 13 million followers. But that's not what we're audience is interested in. However, when Joy worked with Target, they were the perfect team. Those two worked together really well. I think they're still working together, and it's beneficial to both of them. It's just all about finding that right fit. Well, and that's, I, I think the beauty in Pinterest is you can find the right fit, right, Melissa? It's just, it's taking the time to really understand who those people are that make the most sense. Uh, just like any other social network, I think we, you know, you can hop onto Pinterest and get excited about following other people and getting other people to follow you and forget that there is a strategy behind it, just like everything else. And so I love your point there that, yeah, joy is Oh my gosh, she is just an amazing pinner. I'm always blown away by the beautiful things that she pins, but not necessarily my target market. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really making sure that you're you're crystal clear in who that target market is, who it is that you're looking to attract, and then figuring out exactly how you're going to connect with them. How are you going to position that content so that they are coming back to your content over and over and over again? So number two, we want to create that content that your audience loves. And to do that, we want you to become an informational hub. So basically, um, content on Pinterest, if you haven't heard this before, lasts longer than any other platform. So what you pinned 10 weeks ago could be picked up by Pinterest algorithms and go viral. And I've seen that time and time again, where I pin something and weeks later, I'm looking at my analytics going, whoa, what was that spike on Thursday? And where did that come from? And it was a pin that had been hanging around for a while and maybe an influence or somebody uh, with a substantial following had picked it up, had shared it, and it had taken on a whole new life of its own. So it's just a really, uh, it, the, the li shelf life of uh, a pin is really outstanding when you compare it to any of the other social networks. And hopefully some people here with us today have seen exactly that. So if you want to become that hub, if you want to create that content, you first need to take a look at what are the images that that are performing well? What are those images that have already connected with people? Well, first and foremost, you can go into Tailwind and you can look at trending pins from your domain to see what images are already resonating with your audience because why beat your head against the wall? Why just continue to throw stuff out there, you know, throwing it at the wall, hoping it sticks when you can see, hey, this uh, type of pin, maybe this content, 
maybe this design has done really well. So first start out by going over to Tailwind, looking at your trending pins from your domain to see what images are, are really connecting with your audience and what is it that they've started to share. Then take a look at domain activity on Pinterest's own analytics. And if you haven't spent time in Pinterest analytics, I am going to challenge you to do that today after this webinar. Just get yourself in there. I know it's going to feel a little bit overwhelming initially, um, but I'm going to tell you, there's just a couple of areas you need to look. Um, and the first one is, is take a look at your clicks. So take a look at the activity from your website. So you'll see here it's activity from Tailwind's website. And then you're going to click on the clicks tab. It's a little confusing, but three over. So you have impressions, repins, and clicks. Take a look at the clicks because those are going to give you an idea of what images are driving people back to your site. So you see here, it has the most clicked pins from the last 30 days and you can adjust that time frame. Um, but we're looking at 30 days here and it's going to give us a whole list of what uh, those act what the activity is that's been happening with links URLs from our website. So you can see with the clicks how many people actually clicked through. Of course you have a ton of other data within there, but start with those clicks because that's again going to give you a really good idea of the information that people are hungry for, that they're desperately looking for, and that you have provided. And I'll tell you a little secret. What this is going to do for you is help you start to think about maybe a follow-up post if that was just a really great blog post that people loved. Um, maybe it's a, a repurposing opportunity where you can start to create little video tips or uh, maybe an infographic around a post that's done really, really well and break those out into other pieces of content for Pinterest and of course all of your other social networks. So so there's a lot of uh, a lot of research that you can do here within both Tailwind and within Pinterest Analytics uh, to see what is it, what is it that's done well, and then start to think about, hmm, what does that mean in my whole marketing plan in the scheme of things? What could I do to really take that content to the next level? So now you can get a little bit deeper. Um, once you've looked at from a high level what all of the content is that's resonating, now you can do a deeper dive into individual pins and see, first of all, it, who's who's been sharing that content? Who are those people that are sharing that content? Might be a connection opportunity, um, but certainly to be able to see, like I said, what that exact content is that people are just loving, they're craving, and they're sharing from you. Um, and then another repurposing op opportunity, or maybe a follow-up series, maybe a whole series of posts around, for, for me, for example, this was one of my top performing pins, um, how to create a winning social media strategy um, has, I believe, over 20,000 repins at this point and has been an opportunity for me to take that uh, and, tr and turn that into uh, a presentation, a webinar like today, into a mini ebook, into just multiple different pieces of media. And I did all of that because I saw within my analytics that there was a need for this type of content. So paying attention to your analytics is just crucial to you moving forward in a very strategic way. Original pins also, and original pins mean those are your pins, uh, your pins from your domain. They give you an idea about what images people are choosing to share from your site. So what is it that people have uh, gone to your site and decided, wow, this is fantastic information. I either, I want to plan for the future. So they're thinking about how could I use that content? Maybe I'm putting together um, a social media strategy for a client or I'm putting together a social media strategy for my company. And so they're planning for that in the future and they want to pin 
and they want to share that with their community. So taking a look at those original pins will then help you better plan for your future and your future content. Domain insights on Tailwind also give you some really, really interesting information. Um, you can discover the top images from your domain for any time period. So just like um, we were talking about with Pinterest analytics, you can get very specific in your time period. You can take a look at um, what that content is that's getting pinned. And I had mentioned about a spike in traffic. And you'll see here that it, even Tailwind gets those same spikes. So Tailwind had a big spike back in July of 2014. And looking at your analytics will help you uh, really get down into the nitty gritty of that content that's spiking, that content that's going viral, uh, and help you better understand what it was about that content that caused it to take off. Uh, I know every once in a while as a marketer, I look at things and go, huh, and I have to kind of scratch my head. And we really have to do some digging to figure out what it was that made it connect with people. And so looking at these, these analytics, looking at your domain insights uh, is really going to give you that information that you can use to better prepare for your future. So explore your own audience's interests on Pinterest analytics as well. You can also see what's your audience sharing. Um, that's uh, always really fascinating to me to see uh, not just what they're sharing of mine, but on top of my stuff, what else is it that is inspiring them? What else is it that they're pinning? Because there may be an opportunity for me to weave that type of content into my pinning strategy. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as far as as, you know, sharing your own content, sharing other people's content, um, but looking to your audience's interests can be very eye-opening. There are times where I think I had no idea that they were interested in um, that type of content on top of what they're pinning uh, from my website or my blog. And so it, it will give you a unique look into the mind or into the head of your uh, your potential audience, you can also use this with your competition to see what it is that your competition is pinning and then what their audience uh, is sharing from their domain, what their audience is finding relevant as well. So lots of different ways that you can get inside the heads of your potential audience. And then once you have a baseline of what's already working for your audience, then then comes the fun part. Then you can start testing what images perform the best. So you can do some A-B testing. You can start to test if one image does better than the next. Maybe it's a, a real human being. Maybe it's more that vector image. Um, and you can start to really test out uh, the different look and feel for your images. Maybe it's fonts. Maybe it's colors. Uh, whatever the case, this is where you're really going to get zeroed in on what that perfect pin for your business looks like. And then once you get there, it gets terribly exciting because then you can just rinse and repeat. You can start to create that branded experience for people that A, you know is going to resonate, you know it's going to perform well, but you also know it's going to inspire people uh, in the way that they're going to say, wow, I'm, I, I just instantly know that is your content. I instantly can make that connection to your business. So it's, it's going to inspire people to take action. It's going to move people through that marketing funnel to that sales, through that sales process a whole lot quicker because you've branded yourself and they're, they're connecting the dots on that content between you and that content. So it's going to take a lot less time for you to start building building that awareness for you to start seeing the traffic that's going to come from that. So here's some ideas for you. For retail, images that feature the product in context tend to perform better than ones on a stark white background. So you can see here this computer desk just on a stark white background. 
really pretty boring, right? As opposed to putting a desk into context. So putting it into a space where it, it feels warm, it feels inviting, it's comfortable, it makes you want to sit down at that desk, makes you want to work right within that space. So think about that. You could see Target is doing exactly that with huge success, where they've determined that positioning their content in that context really makes far more sense. So think about your product, your service, and how you can better position that within your images, especially for retail, so that people can feel as if they're there. For blogs, um, often a soft white light uh, background with a single focal point and tilt shift, that's that blurred out kind of effect in the background, is what performs best. And you'll see that really used in this middle one, the portrait uh, of a cocktail where we are focused on that middle cocktail and then everything else is kind of blurred out. And it just creates this, this beautiful, very appealing look and feel. Um, but anything, anything can achieve this look, no matter what you're selling, no matter what you're pinning, you can definitely achieve this look. It's just figuring out exactly how to best position your content within, uh, with, within that picture. So think about how to move away maybe from just that, that necessarily stark white background, but more a soft white light background with that single focal point instead of what we We've, I know we've all seen those pins that just have, whoa, way too much going on. You, you know, your brain is just immediately and instantly on overload. This, none of these pictures here do that to you, do they? No, they, they let you feel exactly what is represented. They let you connect immediately with what is represented within that picture. And if you don't have a physical product or maybe your products aren't very photogenic, kind of like what I was talking about, not super sexy, well, no problem because there's lots of other stuff you can create. Quotes are a great one. Um, they're easy to create, easy to share with the Post Planner app. If you haven't played around within there, um, it is a great way for you to find viral content that has already performed well. So it's already been proven that it did really well on Facebook, maybe over on Twitter. And then you can just find that content and you can pin it right over on Pinterest. So it's a great way for you to identify, to discover that content that other people have already said. They put their hands up and said, I love this content. So quotes are just a terrific way to easily share stuff that whoop, went backwards. Um, easily share something that maybe uh, would better represent um, your product or service and better position you. Um, and then are you a blogger? Pull tips from articles, maybe your website to drive traffic back to your product. So always keep in mind, how can you repurpose that content that you've already created? No reason to reinvent the wheel. And you can make those, uh, those graphics branded and you absolutely want to do this because it goes back to that opportunity for people to see that that is your content. They know without, uh, without a doubt, um, there's a ton Tons of great tools out there, Canva being one of my absolute favorites, uh, PicMonkey to easily create graphics. We've also integrated uh, Canva right into Post Planner so you can find that viral content and then you can create uh, those branded images right there within Canva. So you don't necessarily have to share somebody else's post. If it's just a quote um, that you can source, uh, then you can do that right there by creating your own branded image. You can also share other great content like we talked about. You, you don't want to be that person that just simply pushes out your own content. To make your Pinterest page a resource, have at least 12 boards, each with at least five pins. So here's what you can pin. You can pin five, five things your audience loves that best represent your business, five things that your audience has a hard time finding. Again, you can be a resource in finding that stuff and pinning it for them. And then two things your audience absolutely cannot live without. So think about what those things are. 
Next, replace old content with new content. You can create redirects on products that maybe are no longer available. So you always want to get in there and clean up what isn't available anymore. And then use rich pins on your products to alert pinners to when a product is sold out. This is super, super helpful. So rich pins, if you're not using them, we talked about them a little bit on our last webinar, but just a huge benefit. Um, and then again, replacing old content with new content, rotate your boards out based on popularity. So look to your analytics. What boards are getting pinned to the most? And Tailwind tells you this, they will actually show you your top three boards. And I will take that information and move my boards around because what are people doing? They're mostly pinning from mobile. And you want to make sure that as they're landing on your profile, they're seeing those top three boards. And then before that post is published, and I love that Melissa shares this because this was, I think, Melissa, you said one of your first graphics you had ever created, um, that you make sure everything is perfect because this one went viral. And as you can see here, she has a little typo. And there is nothing more embarrassing as a marketer or as a business than having that typo and then having that go viral. So there's just uh, no way to you know pull that back and and hit that undo button. Once it's out there, it's out there. So always, always, always double check. I always have a second set of eyes. So if you have somebody that can be that second set of eyes for you, always a good way to go. Definitely. And that was not my proudest moment, but I'm happy to uh, share it with you guys. Oh, Give but we have to share. Call. That's how we all learn and grow, right? We have to share exactly. what didn't work. <laughs> all yeah. our mistakes. <laughs> And it definitely helps having a second set of eyes just to, you know, look over, see if anything looks funny. Um, it's a lesson that I learned very quickly. And so that brings us to our third tip on how to create a reliable stream of traffic from Pinterest. As we mentioned earlier, your most coveted audiences are planning their future on Pinterest, so you really need to pay attention to what's making them tick. Uh, when Pinterest released the Smart Feed, a whole lot of users noticed that their traffic, repins, follower growth, all sorts of things decreased. That doesn't mean that Pinterest was just being mean and trying to steal away your popularity. They're just putting more of an emphasis on quality. So it's the quality of the pins, the quality of the sites, and what your followers' interests actually are that are playing into the smart feed. And the smart feed really has a thing for rich pins, imagine that. They're higher quality and more informative than that of a normal pin. Uh, there are now six different types of rich pins. There are app pins that place an install button directly onto the pin, places pins that create an interactive map using Foursquare on the board they're pinned to, recipe pins that actually include the recipe on the pin itself, Product pins that uh, we touched on a little bit earlier display the price and the availability, and they'll even alert the user if the price drops more than 10%, which is awesome. I've used that. Um, movie pins that show the cast and reviews of films, and article pins that display a summary, the author, headline from that article. These are created when you add a certain snippet of code to your site. The smart feed also has a preference for surfacing pins from high quality sites. These are sites that are trusted, have already proven themselves on and off of Pinterest, and have images that are Pinterest optimized. Sites that steal content and have a ton of unrelated affiliate links or have been flagged as spam will have a much harder time surfacing in users' feeds and in the search results. Good for us, bad for spammers. And this last one should be an obvious one. You need to pin, pin things that your audience is interested in. And thankfully, Pinterest makes this very easy to find. You just log into your analytics, go to your audience tab, and check out what their interests are. While some of the categories may not seem like the most obvious fit, like on Tailwinds, Nails, and Makeup, not really part of what we do, but it does give us a good idea as to who our followers are and what they're interested in. And while the smart feed has put an emphasis on quality, timing is still so important. More 
You're breaking you're breaking up a little bit, Melissa. I don't know if you moved at all. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you're really breaking up. Okay, it's better. No. Still having a tough time hearing you. Sounds like you're kind of out in outer space. Better. Hmm. Nope. Oh no. Yeah. See, these these are the fun technology challenges when you're live, right? <laughs> There's always something. Uh, sounds like you might be completely gone at this point. All right, so I'll just kind of pick it up, and Melissa, if you can hear me, you just jump back in when you're back. So timing, I, I'm not sure if we heard what she was saying at all, but still super important, even with other factors, uh, it still really matters. So pinning more often gives your content a better chance of being seen, but just like any other social network, you're probably going, yeah, right, I can't be on Pinterest every hour of every day. Um, there's just no possible way. So there's, there's many different ways that you can do that. So you can use schedule scheduling to pin around the clock. And I know there's a lot of talk about automation within social media, and I am a firm believer in automation in moderation. I believe that automation can be a huge help to free up our time, to allow us to get in, uh, maybe create more content, maybe get into the conversation. Um, but And then in this case, it really helps you to stay in front of an audience that might be online when you're sleeping. Um, so use scheduling to pin around the clock, even when you're sleeping, maybe you're eating, maybe you're working, maybe you're vacationing, uh, whatever the case, use a scheduler uh, that does allow you to get in front of people at the exact right time that they are on Pinterest. However, we do have a big disclaimer here. Do not use schedulers that require your password. There aren't any uh, that you should have to give a password to ever, ever, ever. So just make real sure that uh, uh, you're not giving that very important information away. Craft pinnable images. We've talked a little bit about creating your own images and creating branded images, but this is incredibly important if you want to create that consistent, that reliable traffic streaming over to your website and your blog. So craft pinnable images for every post. So at Post Planner, we create three different images. And for you, it could be you know more than that. It could be less than that. But we create uh, a feature image that works very, very well on uh, both Facebook and Instagram. And then we create this image that works very well on um, Pinterest and Google Plus. So know that there are different sizes for all of the different social networks and then make sure that you're creating those images so people can quickly and easily pin your content. There's nothing worse than you trying to build up um, a, a presence over on Pinterest and then not having any images in your blog post uh, to actually allow people People to pin that. So be very thoughtful, very mindful of the fact that people need an image to pin and there are sizes that do work best. I have personally found that 735 by 1102 uh, seems to be about my right size. I go back and forth between a 600 by 900 as well uh, as a much longer infographic. So test, play around, see what works best for your company, but make Make sure you have that pinnable image. Um, and then it, those tools uh, create those images in Canva and PicMonkey. Uh, if you're not 
proficient at Photoshop. These just let you quickly and easily jump in and create something that's very branded to your company. And then there are there are free stock photos from places like Unsplash that you can use royalty free. Um, you have to be very, very, very careful. Unfortunately, we don't have time to get into the usage of images, but you do have to be very careful when choosing your images and especially those free those free photos that you're using. Using. Utilize group boards. Group boards are just another way to get additional exposure, um, some uh, just different advantages and disadvantages, why you would want to use group boards. Uh, I, like I said, if there's somebody there that has a large reach, a large following, um, if they're pinning your content, if you're pinning your content into that group board, uh, there's a good possibility that it's getting shared with a whole lot more people uh, and, and just casting a wider net. And you can find relevant group boards on Pin Groupie, great website. And I've kind of given you a snapshot of what this looks like. Um, you can search for boards using relevant keywords. So look for um, maybe, you know, social media would be a, one of my keywords or social media marketing. Maybe small business would be one of your keywords. Uh, take a look at what boards are out there and then start interacting with them. See if uh, you can't become a part of uh, that particular board. So there's a lot of advantages. Now we're going to jump into number four. We've only got 10 minutes to go. So thank you everybody for hanging in there with us. We really hope that you've just gotten an enormous amount of content and information out of this. Um, we're going to be doing a Q&A here at the end. So stick around for that. I see that we have tons of questions I've been trying to answer as we go through trying to get to you um, on Twitter. Keep using that uh, hashtag as well, Pinterest hacks, um, but just know that we will circle back around and get to everybody's questions. So number four, why and how you must leverage other social channels. And this was one I said at the beginning is probably one of um, the over definitely overlooked opportunities with Pinterest is you you've probably already established yourself over on Facebook, maybe on Twitter, maybe on Google+, um, maybe even on Instagram, and you're wondering, how do I integrate Pinterest into my overall marketing strategy? How do I fit it into what I'm doing? And I am here to tell you that this is one of my favorite parts of getting the word out there about Pinterest. And there are some brands that um, Buffer comes to mind doing just a fantastic job in and promoting, cross-promoting Pinterest and other channels across their social networks. And here's an example of how we're doing that at Post Planners. So I'm here highlighting just one of our boards, uh, social media tips to kickstart your creativity, follow our Pinterest board. So I got really specific on this one. Um, our team did in how to uh, or why you would want to connect with us over on Pinterest. So it's not just simply saying, hey, everybody, I'm over on Pinterest, but it's adding context around that. It's giving people a reason to want to click through because after all, it's our context, it's our thoughts, it's our, our why behind, you know, why we're pinning that content that's really going to connect people to us. So make sure that you're not just simply clicking the tweet button and pushing it out, but create those branded images. You can see here that we created an image that was perfectly sized for Twitter. So this goes back to knowing your social network, knowing the perfect size to share across each one, um, and then giving them a reason to want to actually connect with you on Pinterest. So let them know. If you click on that link, here's exactly what you're going to find. So if you're looking for some social media tips, maybe, you know, you're feeling just a, a little, I don't know, bored with your own content, or maybe you're looking to spice things up, um, just need to kickstart the, the creativity juices, get those juices flowing, well, then you can follow our Pinterest board. So think about 
how you can better use Twitter to promote your Pinterest content, but in a way that says to people, hey, pay attention to this. Look here. This is exactly what I'm pinning. I know you would love it. So hop on over and take a look. As opposed to those people that I know we've all seen that it, it kind of feels like they're just spamming the feed in, in, in pushing out content without any context around it. And that, of course, goes across the board for you know any social network, not just when you're cross-promoting Pinterest content content. Leveraging other social channels, so you can use Facebook, uh, Google+, you can use Twitter, all of them for cross-promotion. And here's one where uh, we're using um, Google+, and you can use Google+, in multiple different ways. I am a huge fan of Google+, as a social network, but really using it in tandem with Pinterest. First of all, that image that you're creating, that pinnable image that we talked about, is perfect for Google Plus as well. Uh, perfect to help you get seen within the stream on Google Plus. Um, and it's content that people on Google Plus are looking for as well. So take that pin, take that perfect image, and share that content over on uh, Google Plus, and then use a call to action. So make sure that you're, you're sharing that content, putting some context around it, and then using a call to action like pin it for later, which is very popular over on Google+. So you're giving people that are, especially on mobile, a really super simple way to say, ooh, 10 ways to look like a pro on Twitter. This is a fantastic infographic, but you know what? I'm flying around the web right now. I don't have time to read it. I don't have time to go through it. I just want to pin it so I can keep it and come back to it later. And that's basically the call to action there. But you could have all kinds of different calls to action. You just need to identify what those, I would say, top three uh, CTAs, calls to action, are going to be for your company, and then start to test those out. Rotate those out across uh, across not just Google+, Plus, but your other social networks as you are cross-promoting Pinterest to see what is raising awareness, what's getting people to actually click through, and uh, getting, getting people to connect with you on Pinterest, getting them to start to follow you, start to share your content, and then, of course, turning those into uh, those leads, those conversions, and those sales, as we talked about at the very beginning. So never, ever, ever share a, pin a, a, a piece of content. I guess that would be the moral of this story without um, having some motivation, some call to action, some idea of what that next step is you want people to take. It doesn't have to be spammy. It doesn't have to be salesy. Um, it can be very conversational. You just need to think through what that next step is because you never want to leave that next step to chance. Otherwise, you're just putting content out there and hoping people uh, pin it. You, you're hoping people share it. You're hoping people uh, click through to your website. You're hoping people read it. Um, and, and hope, uh, as we know, is not a strategy <laughs> in any sense of the word. So you just want to really do some thinking before you start to use those calls to action and figure out what is going to work best for your particular company. And then finally, pinning from Instagram, and this is really exciting. Um, if you're uh, not a Tailwind user, Tailwind has integrated with Instagram, and you can use Tailwind to share content that performed well uh, on Instagram. So it will pull in your Instagram feed, and then you can actually pin that right over on Pinterest. So just another way um, to use that, that content, and I'm going to go back real quick here, got a little trigger happy with my finger, um, to, to share that content that is doing really well over on Instagram, uh, right there on Pinterest. And then one other way to use uh, Post Planner is to find that viral content. You can actually do a search within Post Planner for 
any Instagram content and uh, then repin that with um, the source content. So where that originally came from, be able to source that that Instagram content. But it's a nice way to find uh, other people's content that they're sharing content that's very relevant to your audience uh, and then be able to reshare that. So similar to maybe retweeting, um, you can share that content um, and, and link back to that original content. So two different ways that you can use Tailwind and Post Planner, but both great ways to start cross-promoting content, getting your you know, just additional content over there on Pinterest and out in front of a whole new audience. And Melissa, do I hear you? Do we have you back? I hope so. Can ah, you yeah, you're quieter, but you're back. Awesome. Okay, I have to dial in on my phone. So as long as you can hear me, that's all that matters. It does. And I had just uh, gotten trigger happy with my finger there and gone to your last slide here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk about just uh, what, what that next step is for people that they can take with Tailwind. Sure. So Tailwind actually has a free trial. Uh, it is not time-based. So if you want to take six months to use your first 100 pins to schedule, you can go for it. It's just um, we give you analytics for free, and you can schedule 100 pins for free. And then after that, we have an annual plan that um, with this bit.ly link, bit.ly, bit.ly slash pin hack, you can get 30% off of your entire annual plus plan or 30% off of your first three months. And if you get into your dashboard and realize that you need something a little bit more, shoot us a message and we can work with you on uh, maybe adding some stuff to your plan, figuring out some way to work with you. Terrific. Well, we are right at the top of the hour, so we are out of time, but we are going to stick around for the next 15 minutes and answer all of these Q's and A's, as many as we can get through. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording real quick here. And that was a question that